Hello everybody, this is Abraham with Not Sure Computer Services. What we got here is a mirror from Lexus LS 460. Um, most Toyotas operate the same way. Uh, so what I will do is take this mirror apart. Uh, this mirror has damage, so I'm not really worried or care about the externals. I only need the actual glass. So let's do that. To take the glass out, and this will work on all cars, uh, not just Toyotas, but for Toyota you do this. This is the top of the mirror, you push on the top all the way, and it's gonna be unhappy. There. So you push it all the way so that you get a hole in here, and you take a flathead screwdriver and you're gonna find a little uh, holding um, they're not tabs but they're hooks into which the plastic of the mirror housing is um, snapped into so they're snaps so just like that loosen them and then mirror becomes loose uh, this one I've played with it a little bit so it's a lot easier to take apart. On uh, yours, if you need to take the mirror apart, you might need to persuade it a little more. But it's fairly robust and there is no glass here, so make sure that when I open this up, I'll show you. Oh, and then you can just keep pushing or pulling. This will discon disconnect. Uh, if it doesn't want to, do not overdo it. Just help with a screwdriver. The mirror will come off. Once the mirror is off, we have two connectors here. This particular mirror has two functions. It uh, has a dimming and it has heater. So dimming is this little connector. So sometimes it comes out easy. Other times you need a little screwdriver to release this lock. And heater usually comes out easy. So. There is the mirror in the back. It's dirty, no big deal. These are the hooks, snaps. So there's four of them. Okay. The snaps get snapped into this white piece. This is what actually is connected to the motors that's controlling the whole thing. Let's take it apart. There are four screws that hold the two pieces of the mirror together. And uh, I don't know what happened with this particular one, but it looks like it's melted on the outside. Um, I was quite fortunate to find it cheap because I need a mirror, just the glass, and the glass is like two or $200 crazy amounts. That's because it has all those extra functions, like dimming Ooh. and heating. So, and uh, for some reason I can find the one with the heater, but not the one with the dimmer. And back does come apart. I see there may be sometimes you have to move the uh, mirror that there is a screw under there. Which we'll see in a moment. Oh, this one doesn't have it. So only four screws hold back. We have, oh, the other function that this one has, there's several functions. Just the mirror has the dimming and the heater, but the whole assembly has um, a light. Uh, it kind of shows you, uh, it's not a turning light, but it illuminates where you're going. And it also folds, the mirror does move. 
let's see if we can take yeah. there's the front so fairly simple to take apart once you get the mirror out the most difficult part because the mirror sits and never these pieces never get taken apart and they just become frozen this is the light connector and that's what happened it's frozen a little bit in there So I'm pushing on the lock and trying to get the connector out. Come on. A little persuasion. It doesn't look like this was in a fire, but some high temperature was very near it standing next to a car that was on fire. There. Okay. Oh boy. All right. There's a bulb inside here. That may need to be replaced. is connected it looks like it's screwed in from the inside yep there are the screws so three holes three score screws the There is a system for Honda that I sell that automatically folds mirrors on Lexus LS. That system is actually part of the car from get-go. You don't need to um, get it separately. Okay, not sure if this one actually comes out. Okay. What I want to do is get this motor out and see. So on the Honda, the motor is not replaceable. If you have a problem with the folding mechanism, you have to replace the mirror housing. Maybe not the mirror itself, but housing, definitely. On this one, I saw motors being sold separately. So there's a few screws that hold it together. I don't know if this one can be. The problem is several issues here. The first problem is the uh, wire harness goes right through the whole unit. And second is the spring that holds the top section of the mirror to the anchoring section to this so just a curiosity and a video to add more uh, to YouTube's uh, 
library of things how to take apart. Uh, let's see. So this one is actually metal. Nice. So the carcass of the or frame of this unit is metal. I don't know if this comes out or not. There are screws, but they didn't seem to do anything. So. I don't see any more screws here. Doesn't look like... I'll try to take this studs out. Okay, got my pliers. Let's see. Yep. They do come out. I don't know if it's going to be helpful or not. Studs. under there. Holy hell. There are screws inside. There's some hexes. So it looks like these Phillips heads are holding the, this plastic piece. Um, but the hexes might give us the ability to separate the top and the bottom. I think I have some. Or I shouldn't say they're hexes, they're stars. I think I have some stars here that might fit. They do. These were not meant to be taken apart. Boy, they do not move <laughs> easy. They move, but not easy. I hope that some spring isn't gonna explode. So we got the stars. I see stars. Oh my god. They do not want to move. If somebody wants to take this mirror apart that's what this video is for hopefully this helps somebody out there make a decision on what to do most likely the only thing that most people come to is replacing the mirror itself glass Taking it apart to this level is pra not, not practical. No practical applications for this, and I cannot, I can't turn unless not. Get a bigger one. With a bigger grip handle. like when things can be taken apart. It looks like the spring is coming loose. Alright. Last screw. 
screw is out. Well, let's see what we achieved. Nothing. This is just the bottom portion that came apart. Let's cut this. See what that will do. And I can feel the motor moving. Yes, if if there is a reason to replace the motor that folds mirrors, it can be done. In fact, I like this construction. It does not have a spring. Spring probably is inside of this motor. The downside is if you want to replace just the motor, you have to deal with the wires. Let's see if we can take that apart. Curious to see what's inside. There is just no way that I would be able ever replacing the fold. They have the little tabs, but they don't allow you to take it apart. It's probably glued. No, it's not coming apart. Yeah, I'm curious how this whole thing is. So it just goes right through with uh, two <coughs> contacts for the motor. Very interesting. Um, I, I'm not sure. Not sure if uh, this can be replaced. What I am sure is nobody's going to do it. When it's this much work, it's probably easier just to get yourself a new mirror assembly. Um, yeah, unfortunately, there's nothing wrong with this one, but to replace this plastic piece that has been damaged, you have to take the wire harness out. And there is a lot of wires. This can be taken apart and wires can be uh, taken out one by one. We gotta take all, all the pictures of which wire went where and then reassemble it back. So it can be done, just not very practical. Um, the amount of time spent on getting this done is gonna outweigh the benefits. Unless there's a specific part that's needed. You know, it's just sad that a motor like that could go fail and uh, you have to replace the whole thing. When you see that the wire harness goes through it, <laughs> there is no other choice. You kind of have to replace the whole thing. This one can be, well, let's see if we can take it apart. Oops. This one can be replaced. There's a nice big head screw. The 
there should be two motors in there that uh, allow for this movement. So this gears turn and uh, they move this mechanism up and down. That's what moves the mirror. So two, basically two motors gives you X and Y uh, movement. Here are the two little motors that do it. They got warm gear, transmission of the power and uh, I'm not sure why there's so many wires going into it. You only need four. Oh, I know. Oh, it's not just four. This unit has memory, so it has to know which position the motors were in. Let's that I was always curious how that works. Take it apart. Yeah, it remembers positions. That's why there are so many wires going there. Yep. Looks like the motors are soldered in. There's. Oh, it does come out. Well, let's see. Right. There's a, a jack. Very interesting. I, I did not realize because on some of these units the, they have the uh, wires that look like they're uh, part of a jack but the jack is just soldered in. Not on this one. This one actually can be taken apart. And there is the electronics that creates memory, the counting and everything. There's the four motor connectors and the rest of this stuff is memory. There you have it. That's your mirror right there. Fancy, oh my God. There's all kinds of There's all kinds of uh, things that came out of it, the little little pieces, I don't know where they came from, but how fun. So it looks like these little uh, things, they go through the holes, inside of the hole is some kind of register and uh, there may be magnets or something on this side and it knows how many times the motor has turned, how it worked and which position the mirror was in. The resolution of the movement uh, with this much electronics should be fairly high. Wow, I am impressed. That's the thing that I am looking for. I completely forgot that this mirror has a memory component to it and this memory component right away makes 
this whole thing fairly complicated. That's why they cost so much. Hopefully you liked the video. There is my juice. Enjoy, subscribe, give me a like, and save money. Thank you for watching.